ladies and gentlemen, my name is Witchit, and I'm excited because I aspire to be the most generic art YouTuber in the world. Oh boy. I am feeling much better, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. But my name is Megan, and I am here to tell you today, which I'm very excited, I'm very excited to tell you how you can improve your digital painting skills. The FBI has been withholding the secrets the whole time, guys. This is Illuminati level of information I'm about to dispel for you. You're welcome. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I'm very hyper this morning. I have just downloaded the um, Japanese voice bank for a couple games I'm about to do an art series on. So you're welcome. And I definitely didn't crack open a massive box of Pocky to celebrate and just weep out for a couple of hours. Yes, I promise I didn't do that. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, I'm calming down. I promise. Now I'm ready because I'm hyped because I haven't done a painting in a while. <laughs> and the painting you're seeing on screen is from a, oh, oh, the painting on screen right now. Oh boy. It's a live stream. It was a live stream I did trying to emulate the style or at least try to dissect the style of the world's most amazing painter who I have talked to and is definitely amazing. The world's greatest, I present, the Eclipsing Arts. Eclipsing Art, she's she's so sweet and she's amazing and she's she's got a good funny haha. -ha. Uh, her channel's amazing and the best part about her speed paints is she decides to tell us a little bit about her process. And I did get her brushes, her secret Illuminati brushes, so maybe one day I can paint like her too. Okay, all right. We're three minutes into the video and there is no explanation on steps on how to do this. Okay, all right. Now you guys have broken into the video. But by the way, this is a live stream. I live stream at random. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and maybe Twitch for updates on future live streams. So links in the description. Uh, yeah. And this, this whole painting was done during the exam finals. I literally drew it on a goddamn post-it note and decided, hey, let's do this. So I painted and yes, okay. Now into the video, I'm sorry. Step one, <laughs> invest in your progress. Now I'm assuming that when you're clicking on a video it says how to improve, not how to start. When you're trying to improve, it's always good to invest in your materials. I have a display tablet. I have a Gaumon P180. Obviously, it's no Cintiq tablet, but it's a beautiful tablet. We have a couple problems. I'm not sure if it's the tablet's fault or my computer's fault, but basically, this thing has like over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. It's got a beautiful pen that I love. It's so comfortable. The screen's nice and large, but that's the point. I've invested in my digital art experience. I have other tablets. I've got a screen tablet in here that's like $200 less. This one costs quite a bit more. And then I have another one which costs me about $60 to $70. So what I'm saying is try to invest in your material. Sometimes people like me, I have very bad hand-eye coordination, so I have to be looking at what I'm doing. That's why I'm horrible at video games. I'll probably explain that more in a separate video if you guys want a separate topic on the dissection between a regular pad tablet and a screen tablet but for me screen tablets are papa bless they're amazing because it gets rid of that disconnect and if you get a really nice screen tablet it can completely erode the disconnect and it's basically like writing with pen and paper but if you struggle with the classic issue of the disconnect is so hard like I did Invest in a cheap screen tablet, then level up. Save your money. If you want to continue digital painting, it does really help like mentally where it's like, oh, I'm doing something on a better tablet. It's like the disconnect between like Copic markers and the markers that are probably exactly the same, but just because Copic markers are just a little more legendary to touch because they've got unicorn fibers in them, it just, it's weird and it helps. It's just the mentalness behind it. It's stupid, but it's the human brain. Bravo, human engineering at its finest. Okay, but also it just comes down to a technical standpoint that if you have those more levels of pressure sensitivity, that better painting program, it just, it does make a better quality and it can also make you produce quality faster. It can also help you to fail faster to figure out what's not working and what is working. Which brings me to step two. 
have artists that you enjoy the style of, not necessarily their personality, but the style of art that they do. I really admire, and I'll throw up their, their channels, Sarah Tepix, and of course, <laughs> the amazing Eclipsing Art. <laughs> Those two, I really love how soft and smooth their style is. So people like maybe Sakimi Chan does a lot of high rendering. I like that too, even though uh, racist uncle's gonna throw me under the bus for saying it. I do like my art smooth and rendered, and I'm not very good at that. And that's something I want to work on. I also want to have at least some texture to distinguish, so I want to get like a good medium in between, and I want to get better at colors and stuff like that. But focusing on artists that you like the style of and you like the way that they paint, try to dissect their painting method. That's what I did with Eclipsing Art. I followed through with a couple of her speed paints. I slowed them down a little bit. YouTube allows you to slow down videos, by the way, by at least 2%. I highly recommend that. And the best part is if the painter that you are watching the speed paint of does this special thing called not cropping their screen. I'm sorry guys, I'm an example of a screen cropper. It's not because I don't want you to see my brush settings, I just think that it looks better. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that doesn't mean my brush settings aren't open. You can comment below. I'll, I'll dissect my brush settings if you really want them, but I don't think I'm good enough to do that. Okay, but if they don't crop their whole screen, it makes it 10,000 times easier to figure out how they do their painting methods, especially you gotta check their descriptions and their channels if they already divulge the information of their precious brush settings because those brush settings could make or break how you're doing their art. Brush settings are a very technical thing, but basically it can affect how much they blend, what the color jitter is. It can basically pretend it's like using watercolors and then acrylics and you're trying to achieve the same thing. You're gonna get to it eventually, but it's just gonna be more difficult. So if you're trying to achieve the same look as them and you wanna work along with them and figure out their process, you're gonna need to use a very similar or the same brush type as them. Bless all the artists that choose default brushes with minor, minor tweaks. Uh, I just go to the Clip Studio Asset Store and, <laughs> and get all the free brushes because that's great and some of them are really good. But it also just comes down to experimenting. Sometimes you need to collect a variety of artists that you really like, especially when it comes to painting. Because when it comes to anatomy, you can go even broader and experiment yourself. But if you really don't know how to paint, like I don't know how to do overpaintings. Overpainting is when you have a sketch and you paint over the thing. Self-explanatory. I've always played it safe and gone under all of my sketches, which makes it easier. So when you take off that line art layer or that sketch layer and it always looks funky, that's how to get rid of the funkiness, just do an overpainting. But it is, it, it does get really hard. And some tutorials on YouTube are very vague. And sometimes, actually, which makes me a little mad, is their tutorials don't necessarily go about the same way they do painting. I, I don't remember which YouTuber it was, but they do their tutorials in a very different way that they actually draw and paint, which makes me a little upset, because it's like, so you don't want to divulge how you do it, you just want to do a different method. But I've got no qualms against that. That's just what some people do because it's either easier way of learning or the technical way of learning. But I'm not going to get into that. But yes, so study. Also study from real life. Once you take how they stylize the way they've painted, you also need a basic understanding of how the real, the real, the real 3D world works. You need to be able to have those fundamentals. So fundamentals in that, paired with studying their speed paints and how their style works, can really help push you in the cone of direction of where you want your style to go. Now obviously since you're emulating their style, because you cannot physically steal a style unless you steal their goddamn brain, your style will take its own road. Obviously my work looks nothing like ellip ellipsing arts, <laughs> eclipsing arts, because I ended up using different brushes, I ended up having a different style, the way I pair my anatomy, the subjects I draw, Although, then again, we both draw really cute waifus. <laughs> but my work ends up looking very different to hers, but still has a very similar quality to it, which I wanted. Okay, next is step three. It'll, oh, by the way, step two also helps you to get inspired. So, yeah. But step three, practice. That's the most basic <laughs> information any artist will give you. Practice. But pair that with step two, which is getting the fundamentals and 
figuring out their style, it helps direct that studying in a way that'll get you, you know, the cone of where you want to go. You know, it's just like the cone. It'll take you to the place of studying where you want to go. Now, you should still experiment so you have the full range and find other artists, even if you don't like their style, and still try to, like, work with it. It's a little hard to explain, but you want to be a jack of all trades rather than just keep doing one thing. It's better to get a full experience of everything. You may not like everything in the art community, but at least trying to experience it and trying to do it may help you in your road to finding your own style. Just experimenting. It's all under the cone of experimenting, but if you're very new to painting like I am, sometimes it is nice to have a little gateway of how things work. As for step five, to complete this lovely journey, we're going to have the words of eclipsing art to guide you on your way. Someone much more qualified than me. Here we go. It really depends on the artist because people struggle with different things with art and with the digital media. I'd really say to not be afraid to experiment because you've got the advantage that it's digital. Go explore different color tones and ideas for composition even as you are working. I saw that you were already kind of doing that in that video I commented on, lol. I like to try and make things up on the fly too. For painting itself it honestly just comes down to practice and just doing dumb crap. I think one thing I've learned is to not be afraid to redo things. Sometimes after spending a lot of effort one something I'm like or oh, why don't wanna change it but yo man sometimes it's worth it. Obviously, I'm gonna state this again. This video is nothing about drawing. I guess you can apply it to drawing, but this is how I learned how to do the painting you're seeing on screen now. <laughs> like, that's just how I improved from going from this, which I will show you a very bad painting I did purely by myself, with this, following a speed paint and taking the advice I heard in this video right now. Big difference. There's also a couple months of a difference, but... I didn't practice digital painting between these two months. So technically it's the next painting in the series, if that makes sense. I'm sorry, I'm not the best person to come get advice from. The only other thing I can say <laughs> is do 30 second figure drawings to learn fluidity and learn from other people that are more capable of doing stuff than me. This is just my woo. Have fun, guys. I'm totally a teacher. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to work. I promise I'm feeling better. There's still some stuff going on with my family that I made a quick announcement about. I'll probably mention it in a different video, but for now, this is being filmed on Christmas Eve, so if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate any other holiday, Happy Holidays, and enjoy your break thanks to your fellow Christian server friends. <laughs> Otherwise, thank you very much. Happy New Year. I hope you're just as tired as I am because I've worked my butt off for finals and I'm now free of finals until my next finals. Alright.